Yeah, it's now uh, recording. So, hi everyone. This is a, a new workshop for this well for this four day, where we had uh, about CS calculus by Leah Ye, by University of Oxford. So, Leah, can you start? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Leah. I'm a PhD student at uh, um and uh my research in my phd uh, my phd research is about quantum comp compilation quantum circuit synthesis quantum computer architecture quantum error correction um and uh applying diagrammatic methods to that so the purpose of this workshop i'll give an in an overview of uh these quantum graphical calculi uh, uh specifically the zx calculus um although i also research other quantum graphical calculi, such as the ZW calculus, CH calculus, um, and combinations of this. So uh, I also, more specifically, uh, um, have been focusing on qubits. So these are, uh, if a qubit is a two-level system, a qubit would be uh, three levels or more, so uh, generally, so or just the generalization to any number of uh, levels. So for example, for qubits, it's uh, your qubit states are um, superpositions of uh, ket0 and ket1. But for a qtrait, you could also have ket0, ket1, and ket2, and uh, so on. So for larger, um, just higher energy levels. Um, but I won't talk about qubits today. Um, but if anyone wants to talk about them in the future, just reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on Discord, uh, such as for this hackathon. Um, so, uh, about the ZX calculus, um, uh, perhaps one of the guides to get started with is this textbook. Um, and this was the start of uh, educational material and using the ZX calculus. Um, also share uh, about uh, the Python tool for the ZX calculus called PYZX or PYZX is how it's pronounced. Um, uh, and um, uh, these two are my PhD supervisors, and they are the ones that created physics. So I can do a brief demo of physics after. So um, this talk, I'll focus more on the quantum computing applications of ZX calculus, um, and just um, have a more start with the more basic stuff of seeing it in action. But for there is a lot of research applications. So there's uh, uh, over 100. Um, papers on the ZX calculus, uh, research papers, of which you can see at the website of the ZX calculus. Um, but we won't get into all of those today. Uh, the purpose of this is just uh, to see that it's uh, it could be useful to people at all different stages, from uh, beginners to the to quantum computing to uh, people currently researching. Uh, in particular, there is a textbook that's upcoming that uh, I've seen the draft um, that's intended for high school high school student level to learn quantum computing with the ZX calculus and quantum information. So that one is from Bob Kuka and Stefano Gogioso, and you can look out for that in the coming few months, I expect. Um, uh, I'll just start with introducing what you are drawing in the ZX calculus. So the reason why it's called Z and X is because uh, it refers to the Z and X spaces. So um, um, in general, this the red color is about the X basis. Um, uh, is about the X. Sorry, the Z, uh, the red color. These ones are um, the Z basis, and then the this green ones are the X basis states. That for a single qubit. So if you remember on the block sphere, this ket0 and ket1 are plotted uh, on the uh, on the plus and minus ends of the z-axis of the block sphere, and this is the plus and minus ends of the x-axis of the block sphere because they're the eigenvectors of the of the um, z gate here and of the x gate here. So um, how it's drawn uh, is that. Um, this pi phase represents a pi rotation about the block sphere um, with respect to the x-axis. So um, this, so uh, 
then being um, half, so pi is halfway around the circle, which is why zero and one were opposite on the block sphere. Uh, so, so far, we all we've done has different notation, but let me just show you the block sphere really quick. So, um, so uh, here, so uh, I used pink instead of red. This was just, uh, it's, um, but uh, I'm going to use pink interchangeably with red. Um, for qubits, they don't have any difference in meaning. Uh, so here is the, um, a Z phase gate is a rotation about this Z, Z axis with angle alpha. And in uh, bracket notation, it would look like this. When alpha is equal to pi, it's exactly your qubit Z gate. And uh, we notate it in ZX calculus, reading from left to right, just like in circuit diagrams, um, like this. And then X rotation gate is the same thing, but about the X axis. So uh, here is the Brock notation for it. Um, it's the same thing as the Z1, except uh, it's the X basis states instead of the Z basis states. And um, the first uh, things to check is that, okay, if you apply the X gate here to the zero state, then you get the one state. And if you apply the Z gate to the plus state, then you get the minus state. Um, so far, uh, what we're going to see that is in general is that whenever you have two of the same color, um, same color dots uh, connected by at least one wire here, there's one, there's exactly one wire, but it could be more as that as well. If they're the same color, then you can just fuse them together and add their phases together. So by default, uh, if there's no phase label, then it's zero phases. That's a phase of zero. And uh, I'll show these comics about um, these rules specifically. So the one I described about the different colors uh, here, let's say uh, you have here, you have two spiders that are both green and um, they're connected by at least one wire. So uh, the rule for that in ZX calculus is called spider fusion. And um, you just can merge the spiders together and now it becomes one spider. <laughs> Uh, you can also do this in the other color as well. Um, I'll come back and forth between these slides. So, so um, what does it actually mean for a spider to have more than one or two inputs, or more than two legs. So currently for these states, uh, it's just like you would in the circuit notation. Um, it's just one output. So a state is uh, any diagram that has no inputs and only one or more wires as output. Um, so here, uh, this will, let's first consider this green spider that has one input and two output wires. Um, and what it does is if you apply it to here A or A and B, they're bits. So if you apply this to A pi, where A is, if A is zero, then this is the cat zero state. And if A is one, then this is the cat one state. If you apply this green one input two output spiders to this either cat zero or cat one, then you get it to be copied. So it copies this. Um, this doesn't violate no cloning in, in quantum computing, by the way, because uh, this is only working, this only copies this basis and doesn't copy any other basis. So um, if you also, if you have a red two inputs, one output spider, what it does on uh, cat zero and cat one is that uh, it will add them, uh, it will add them together. Uh, this is an XOR, so it will add them together modulo two. So if these are both zero, it'll give you the zero state. If it gives is one of them is cat zero, the other is cat one, or um, in any order, then this is cat one. And if they're both cat one, um, one plus one is two, but mod two is zero. So this gives you cat zero. Uh, the reason why uh, we started with this is because this is, we're now getting first to our CNOT gate. So, um, if you start in the bottom right here, you can see that this is exactly equal to what we had on the previous slide, um, just tensor with uh, identity wire. So um, just like in the circuit model, if you if you um, have wires 
rows, uh, qubits that are next to each other, that's the tensor operation. And that means that they're uh, um, happening uh, at the same time. If you think of it next to each other in a circuit diagram, just means happening at the same time. So, so um, here you uh, could see this operation. But um, in ZX calculus, uh, you can always bend the wires however you want. So, um, and uh, when you bend these wires, as long as which are the inputs, which are the outputs, and which is connected to what, with how many likes, it's always, with how many wires is always kept the same, then you can always uh, bend the wires and that doesn't change the quantum circuit. So the quantum circuit is mathematically the same. So um, here we can see that, uh, we can bend this to view as this is a green copy and then an X match, match meaning it matches if uh, it tells you whether or not the two inputs are the same uh, Z-basis state or this or different Z-basis states. But you could also have bent it the other way so that this is an X copy and then a Z match, which is uh, happening on the other basis. Um, and you can bend it, uh, so because this is the same regardless of which direction you bend it, you could also have drawn it like this. So where my cursor is now, this is uh, as uh, just drawing it vertically. And um, it, if you view it this way, um, then it looks as if you're just taking the circuit model CX gate and just redrawing it um, this way. However, it's a bit more than that because uh, it's very powerful that we're able to break up the CX gate. Previously, you view CX gate as one gate happening on two qubits, but this views it as um, two spiders. So spiders is a dot with any number of likes, two spiders. So you're chopping up this CX gate into this green part and this red part. Um, we'll see quickly how that's quite useful. Um, <laughs> I uh, just wanted to show some wire bending. So uh, as I said before, take this diagram on the left here, and you can bend the wires any so any which way you want, as long as here, this in, which ones are the inputs and which ones the outputs are preserved. And uh, this one right here has no inputs and no outputs. So it's called a scalar. So it's just a number, um, just a complex number of any magnitude in, uh, in general. Um, so you can drag those around also. So you just put them here since they don't have any wires. And if you notice all the connections, if you follow them all, they are the same across these two diagrams. And so these two diagrams, are the, re the reason why we have an equal sign here is that they're mathematically equal. So we can write equations of these diagrams just like that. Um, I, so, and then on the, um, Previously, so why this works is uh, part of the reason why is because uh, you can bend the wires, um, not just like up and down side to side, but you can also bend them uh, completely. If you bend them completely around, then uh, it's as if you're bending what used to be an input here where my cursor is, bending them into outputs here. Um, and actually, if you do that for both the... Um, if you do that for both the uh, input and the output, so here for this example, it's reading from bottom to top or, or top to bottom, but let's just say from bottom to top here. If you take this box and bend, uh, if you take this box and bend all the, uh, from bottom to top, bend all the outputs into inputs and all the inputs into outputs, then you straighten it. It's as if you're rotating this box 180 degrees. So that's why um, this rotated 180 degree box is the transpose of your, just your, uh, whatever your diagram was F. And it's as if you bent of the original F before you took the transpose. It's like literally bending the uh, inputs into outputs and the outputs into inputs. And so this is, uh, so this interpretation is in line with, uh, so these this f is just a linear map so you can always write it as a so you can write it as a matrix and if you have to take the transpose of a matrix then uh the inputs and the outputs are literally swapped so it just means that um, whenever you rotate a diagram with its inputs and outputs uh 180 degrees that's just the transpose so um There's still a few more um, 
tricks to show before you can hopefully you can start to see the i guess the power of being able to write these diagrams um and kind of contrast it with the circuit model where you have boxes with letters on them and you have to memorize what the matrices correspond to those letters um so uh first of all here's a swap gate well the swap gate is just this part uh the swap gate's drawn the same way as you would draw it in the circuit model and of course if you have two swap gates it's the identity on those two qubits so uh so um but in zx calculus uh because this the swap gate doing the swap gate twice is just the identity and this just follows from um you can uh, look at this whole diagram and see that you can uh, bend the wires without changing which is the total which one's the inputs and which is the outputs and it's just a matter of this wire bending to show that two swaps is the identity um it's also easy to permute anything with a swap gate to com to commute anything and see what uh changes about it so um here is a CNOT gate that was happening before a swap gate and um, you can just bend the wires without changing the connectivity. So, so slide this green down here and slide this red, down, red up here. And you're still, the green and red are still connected. And um, this just sliding it through tells you that uh, if you draw, if you first do a C knot and then a swap, it's as if you did the swap first and then a C knot in the other direction. Um, so that mathematically is the same. Um, back to our C knot. Uh, first, I'll introduce one more rule. Uh, this is um, if you have a Z phase gate, but the phase that you're rotating about the Z axis on the block sphere is zero, then uh, it's as if you, because you're not changing the state, then it's just the identity. And the same with rotating a phase of X about the X axis. So um, if you plug in, uh, knowing this, now you can look at from here, this left hand side. What this is, is if you're plugging in the ket0 state to the control of the CNOT gate. Um, and as shown before, we had the, the green spider with one input and two outputs uh, copies this ket0. And so uh, this copy just makes it a red here and a red here. But uh, this fuses because of the same color. And now you have this. Um, but uh, if you're doing a rotation phase 0 about the x-axis, then it's as if you're doing nothing. And so um, it's identity. And so what we proved here is that if you apply the ket0 to a CNOT gate, then you'll always get identity on the bottom wire. Um, and you'll always get uh, the CNOT, the ket0 that you start with on the top wire. Um, I guess this is obvious based off by the definition of the, of the CNOT gate. Um, this, it's, it's called a control knot because you don't do anything to the x to the target if the control is zero. Um, but if the, if the control was cat one state, then uh, this z spider would still copy it, and then you would end up this would be a pi phase here, and it would fuse here, and then you would end up a pi phase z uh, pi pi phase x gate, which is same as x gate. And so it you it just this is just telling you the definition of the CNOT gate uh, as it's usually given. Um, but what's really cool about this is that uh, this is actually symmetric with respect to color in the other direction. So um, if you have a CX gate, but your target, you plug in the ket plus state, then uh, you just apply the exact same rules, but in the opposite direction in color. And then you get, uh, if this plus state, if you plug in a plus state to the target, then you get uh, identity on the control. Um, so this is quite cool because in the other basis, it's as if the other one, the other qubit, uh, in the other direction was control and target. You swap the control and target if you swip, switch the basis basis states, which are input. Um, and also, just the same if this uh, if this target would be plugged in ket one, then it would copy through, and you would get uh, ket. You would get a pi phase of of a z gate, a z phase gate of pi phase, which is the same as a z gate, and it would do a z gate on the what we would call the control. Um, conventionally of the CX gate. So um, I'll stop for questions in the middle soon, since I know this is uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, but I'll show one more example first. So this is about commuting phase gates through this CX. 
Um, so a T gate, uh, if you recall, the matrix of a T gate is just the it's just the Z phase gate of pi over four. So this pi over four gate, if you have it like this, um, you can use spider fusion to merge the this T gate and the control of the C naught, and to get like some listed looking diagram. Uh, and then you can also unfuse because uh, they're equal signs. So equal is true in whichever direction. So um, you unfuse, and then uh, this now you have a T gate after the C naught. So you can see that you can slide a T gate and have it before or after the C naught gate. It doesn't change the computation. So um, now I'll take a break for questions, but like at this kind of halfway point before we proceed. Uh, afterwards, I'll show the Hadamard gate and show the um, and show the uh, what is it? The uh, just some software, <laughs> so physics. Um, th so there was a question in chat. Uh, it says, "What was that merge? Can you explain it further, please?" So uh, let me go back. Yeah, uh, I had we had a question. I don't know if you. Yeah. Uh, okay. I saw the question. So um, the question was about what is this merge? So um, uh, previously I showed you that uh, graphically, whenever you have a spider of two, any two spiders of the same color that are connected by at least one wire with nothing else on that wire, then you can always uh, smash these two spiders together. Um, they're just called a spider because it's a colored dot with any number of legs. Um, and uh, once you smash them together, if they have some phase on it, you add up the phases mod 2 pi. Um, and then you get a big spider. <laughs> so that's this is uh, this is like merging any two spiders. Um, also or called fusing. Um, whichever word you use for them, uh, that's what it's doing. Um, and mathematically, this holds uh, if you... Um, I didn't give the definition for the spiders here. Uh, let me write it down. Uh, let's see. How do I? I think I can't. OK, I think I should draw in PowerPoint. Give me a second. Oh, I can do this. So the mathematical definition of the spider is um, a sum over the basis states i, and then uh, the number of inputs. So this is i, where this dot 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 just is weak. i. Can, it can be any number of inputs from zero to any number as much as you want. Uh, yeah, are you <laughs> sharing your screen? Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought I was. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, so, okay, I'm back here. So um, I wrote down the definition of a spider here. So this thing is the mathematical definition of a spider, where this it's a summation over the basis states i. This dot 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 represents uh, the number of uh, the number of inputs here and the number of outputs here. So that's the bracket definition of a spider uh, for of a green spider. And in a green so for a green spider, uh, these ones are z basis states. Um, so if you check that, you can check that this rule holds for all, all green spiders, so having this form. Uh, um, so um, in specifically, uh, if there's a phase on it, then it would, the definition would be like zero. Um, zero plus um, e to the i alpha, where alpha is the phase that's labeled on your spider. One, um, all ones here. And this dot, dot, dot just means uh, any number of um, inputs and any number of outputs. So it could be zero, it could be any number. And uh, you can check that uh, any spiders of this rule, of this uh, form, will always merge. Uh, underneath that, basically, what is happening is that uh, there's some, uh, there's a lot of specific structures in quantum. Uh, there's mathematical structure in uh, quantum computation that isn't very obvious or just not obvious at all hidden by this if you let's write it as matrices but um if you write it as uh you it, you can express it in terms of algebras but then uh, from these algebras you can uh, and 
with category theory, you can, um, you can, or uh, the people before us have formulated this into uh, these graphical calculi. And uh, for my research, I don't really do much category theory or algebra. So I just can use the diagrams. But I know that these diagrams are mathematically correct because they were that was proven. So and these diagrams are and rules on them are constructed from these uh, algebras. So if, for those of you who are mathematicians, but if not, don't worry, uh, who specifically have looked into this more specific, uh, this is a part, this is a Frobenius algebra, um, is why you are able to fuse and unfuse these spiders. Um, so go back, uh, I think it's a good time to continue, but um, if people have more questions, if you put it in chat, I'll get to them uh, as we go. So um, the only last gate to introduce, because all the common uh, single qubit gates like H, S, uh, T, T uh, CX, uh, and two qubit gates CX, uh, out of them, uh, and Z and X, these ones, out of all these gates, the only one we haven't covered yet is uh, H. So the H gate, how it's drawn in Z calculus is just a square. Um, I use a yellow square here, but I also used a blue square elsewhere. Um, but um, this a square with one input and one output is the Hadamard gate, uh, how it's drawn. And uh, what it it's for color change. Um, so uh, if you, the rule is that if you put each gates all around any Z rotation gate, like this, you get an X rotation gate. Uh, this is if you have one input and one output. But it's actually, is more general. This holds for any number of input to the Z to this Z phase spider and any number of outputs, including zero. So um, if you uh, so um, if you put an H box on all the inputs and all the outputs, uh, then you get this. And the same ho thing holds in the opposite direction because uh, two Hadamard gates is the uh, identity. So if you put another Hadamard here on all the inputs and another one on all the outputs, two Hadamards are the identity, and then it's um, do that to both sides of this equation, and you get that uh, a Z spider with uh, just bunch any number of inputs and outputs, the same as a Hadamard gate on all the inputs to the red and all the outputs to this red. Uh, as a fun fact, this Hadamard gate um, has this uh, decomposition into a Z rotation, then an X rotation, then a Z rotation, uh, all of pi over 2 phase angle. Um, and uh, so one uh, simple example of this color change rule on the top row here is uh, if you have the ket plus state and you apply the H gate to its one wire, then you get the ket zero state. And uh, two Hadamard gates is the identity. Um, something that uh, immediately follows is that it becomes very simple to push Hadamard gates through any spider. So if you have Hadamard gates on all of the inputs, or you can introduce them because you can any input with no Hadamard gates on it is the same as it has this, if that wire had two Hadamard gates on it. So if you had any number of Hadamard gates, you could push it through this green spider um, because uh, first put two Hadamards on all the outputs and then use this color change rule. And then that it's as if you pushed it through and changed its color in the meantime. So the act of pushing Hadamard gates through uh, any spider will propagate that Hadamard gate to all of the other uh, wires in the spider and also change its color. Uh, some of the intuition about this if, is that uh, the Hadamard gate is also called the quantum Fourier transform uh, for a qubit, and it's because it's transforming between the Z and X bases. So that's, the, in, that's literally what it's doing. And because we used these colors to represent the, which basis states which uh, which basis uh, the eigenvectors of it would be, then um, then um, this color change is literally changing, uh, is how we uh, notate in ZX calculus, changing the basis. Uh, I have this as an example, but actually I'm going to switch to a worksheet and not show you because I think it'd be cool to do the worksheet instead. Um, so although the worksheet was designed for uh, in-person workshop, but um, I'm still happy to share this with you all and uh, and um, uh, show 
show an example here. So first of all, these are all the rules we've seen so far. And um, uh, some of these other stuff are just, uh, this workshop was also along with uh, introducing quantum computing. Um, but so something I'll show is I will just do this worksheet first. I'm not sure. OK, I think, uh, Alberto, is my screen uh, big enough? Can you see the text? Yes, looks okay, that's pretty good. well. OK, so I'm going to draw here uh, a Bell state in ZX calculus. Um, so Bell, so um, here, uh, this, is, this is Alberto's art. So this is, uh, uh, well, the cat was an open source image, but all of this is, this is um, Alberto made this Bell state circuit. So here, this uh, we just used cat to represent cat kid zero and a, well, a happy cat and a not happy or a dead cat to represent cat one. Um, so this, if you put cat, two cat zeros into a H gate on Hadamard gate and one of them, and then a, a C not gate like this right after, um, you get the bell state. And this is how you usually draw a bell state in the circuit model. Uh, I'm going to show you how the, um, first of all, you can take any quantum circuit. You can always translate it into ZX calculus, just one by one, uh, as shown before. Um, so, uh, if you know how to, to express the, these. Um, so here I'm using, uh, actually I'm going to use colors just so, uh, and so, but uh, conventionally sometimes people use uh, dark colors for the, for the red instead of red, like if you're printing black, black and white, for example, and, um, people may use, um, uh, people will use light colors for the green faces, but some people also reverse that convention. So, whichever works. Ah, that's not good. I'm just gonna leave the Hadamard gate as a white, just so it's okay. No. Okay, so that's um, if you translate first everything here, literally to CS calculus. And now we can use our rules. So first of all, uh, let's use the rule that the Hadamard gate color changes this red. So that's basic green. Uh, I'm just going to draw the lines here, be lazy. Oops. Um, everything here is a circle. I'm just not making it too pretty so that you guys don't have to watch me draw as long. Now we can use spider fusion. So let's fuse these two greens and let's also fuse the two reds. Um, so any so anything like this, uh, if a green spider has two legs or if a red spider has two legs and both and uh, no phase, then it's just a diidentity. Um, so uh, how earlier I explained it was like, it was because uh, if you have a uh, green space spider with no phase and change in the one input and one output, it's the identity. And the same with red, a uh, red phase gate with, uh, you're changing the phase of zero, uh, zero phase angle. But actually uh, in these characters, I also said you could bend the wires however you want. So there's no notion of inputs and outputs within the interior of a ZX diagram. So, um, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, um, so this, so if you look at this, it has two legs. And so uh, it doesn't matter which one you think of as the input or output. In any case, what happens is that they go away. And so this is what you get. So in the ZX calculus, the velocity is just a wire bent around 180 degrees like this. So I'm reading from left to right. Uh, it has no inputs. This has no inputs here, and it has two outputs here. Which is as we expect, because a bell state is a two qubit state, and a state has no inputs. Uh, 
Um, so uh, I think you, uh, I'll leave it as an exercise for you guys to uh, do the same thing before the GHZ state instead of the Bell state. Um, I'll send this worksheet to you all afterwards. And uh, so using what this worksheet is, uh, with using only the rules in this table, uh, just this one page table, um, you'll be able to derive what the GHZ state looks like in ZX calculus. So um, uh, I, I don't mean like when you translate everything literally, but also after you simplify. Uh, and you can share it with each other after, see who got the simplest GH looking GHC state. So the GHC state is this one. It's the equal superposition of all zeros and all ones, or three qubits. Um, and it's the, it's the generalization of the Bell state. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, yeah, hello? We have a question. The question is, in quantum computation, is the law of conservation of matters still being complete, complete with? Um, yeah, so... Uh, uh, um, well, you're not changing any matter here. Uh, this is... Uh, these are all states of qubits. So here you're not... Uh, you're not doing anything to change, to, to not conserve matter. So yes, um, here what we're manipulating in quantum computation is the states of the qubits, but then they're, uh, you can initialize the state to something that you know, but uh, you're not deleting the existence of any matter or creating new matter here. Uh, okay. and. Uh, I think there was also one more question. Um, so why is an entangled state just a wire? Uh, not just any entangled state, specifically the Bell state. So the Bell state being defined as the equal superposition of ket 0, 0 and ket 1, 1. Um, that is a wire. That's like this. Um, uh, one way to think about it, remember how earlier I said uh, transpose is bending the input into output and output into input. So um, let me write. Uh, so remember the bell state is defined as this. And uh, it's as if you're, if you had a zero state, if this was in the zero state, then it, if you like, uh, by, or specifically, um, if you post selected this to be zero, um, let me first, let me uh, write on a new line so it's not crazy. Okay, so drawing this here, if you had a bell state and you posted, selected this to be zero, that's the same as if you had the zero state like that. Um, post selecting to zero is drawn like uh, this in ZX. Um, so, uh, this bell state basically, if the takes, if one of them was zero, then it, the other one is also zero. If one of them was one, then the other one's also one. Uh, and this is, uh, this is actually true, not just the state zero, but in any single qubit state, um, the bell state does, this is what the bell state does to it. You can bend the wire 180 degrees because you're still preserving what is the inputs and outputs of the whole diagram. Because the only input or output to this whole diagram here is uh, this one, is that one. So you can bend. Um, and uh, where that shows up, maybe the best example of this, I'll just show the idea. But um, uh, afterwards, I can I will share and link a full tutorial. So this poster I presented at the uh, Quantum Science and Engineering Education Conference last month, uh, co-located at IEEE Quantum Week. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, so, but um, this so the poster is a bit uh, is a bit condensed or um, dense, but the there's a tutorial that is uh, almost a hundred pages that goes through um, intro to quantum circuits. So, assuming you don't know any bracket notation or uh, 
any what is a qubit these kind of things and also the blocks introduces the block sphere unit circle and then uh also introduces the calculus and all the single qubit gates uh, that I discussed and also the CX gate and uh, at the end of the tutorial goes to quantum teleportation. So this is a spoiler for the I guess my own tutorial that I worked on with uh, I developed this with James Weaver um, so he goes by Jim. Um, he's the guy who developed Kiskit blocks for example. Um, he also wrote the Kiskit block Kiskit pocket guide textbook which came out this month. Uh, this was when I worked part-time at IBM quantum education in the past year. So uh, this is your conventional quantum teleportation circuit. Um, uh, I think it's better if I don't explain this for now so I can move on to the software, but uh, to the software demo. But um, basically, you, if you've seen this before, you know that this is the quantum teleportation circuit. And uh, well, I mean, I mean, I won't explain it with uh, doing the comp computation. But uh, all I will do is to just tell you that um, if you replace this with the bell state, uh, and then because this is the bell state, this is the bell measurement. Uh, so a bell measurement is just a bell state, but the, the transpose or the, the op, sorry, the horizontal reflection of it, um, it just, um, but because you can't measure deterministically, your output qubits are going to be either in the zero or one state. So um, you don't know which one, well, until you do the measurement. And uh, what happens is that if you simplify, uh, we already showed how to simplify the bell state earlier in ZX calculus, so we know that just becomes the this 180 degree bend. Um, for the bell measurement, let's simplify it here. So um, take this bell measurement, A and B are bits here. Uh, then um, do the same, it's the exact same rewrite rules as with the bell state. Um, so change color here, fuse these two together, and then, um, but uh, you, this time you can't remove these two because you don't know if the A or B are 0 or 1. So you just leave them on there like this. And uh, quantum teleportation, the goal is that you want Alice has two qubits. Um, Alice wants to send the state of one qubit called psi because it's an arbitrary one qubit state and send it to Bob. And Bob wants to receive that the state of that qubit. So it's not teleporting matter, it's teleporting the state of the qubit. Um, and so in Alice, the protocol is that they do this circuit and then they and then Alice tells Bob what is the values of A and B so that Bob can do the right corrections. Because uh Alice is going when when they do the circuit, um, so Alice and Bob share a bell state, but they don't, but Bob doesn't know the state of psi. And um, this is what they get from the circuit, um, like this, except and the corrections that Bob must do after he hears classically from Alice what are A and B is that Bob must apply this uh, A pi gate. So this is applying the X gate if and only if A was one and doesn't apply the X gate if A was zero. And the same for the uh, Z gate if B was one and no, doesn't apply the Z gate if B was zero. And uh, what happens is that you can just slide this around um, uh, fuse these two together, and then uh, no matter what a is, if a is zero or one, when you do a pi plus a pi, that's two a pi, and that's mod two pi, that's always zero. And the same thing with b pi. So you fuse, and then you can always remove it. And so uh, the quantum teleportation protocol will just succeed perfectly if, uh, assuming you no know, like experimental noise, it will just uh, um, succeed perfectly like that. Uh, because and uh, how, this is how you can prove it and see it, that it works using just the calculus without um, notice how we didn't need to do any matrix multiplication or software or running any circuits to do to reason this, uh, just drawing diagrams with colors. Um, OK, uh, I'll do a, I'll just show you how to get to the software demos. And um, I think that's a good place to stop and ask for questions. So um, here I have opened a Jupyter notebook. Um, I'll go over that, uh, how I got to this Jupyter notebook. Um, I have some tabs open here and I'll send you all of them afterwards. So uh, this, okay, I'll start here. This is the ZX Calculus, zxcalculus.com. So this is a website that uh, you can stay up to date with all the more than 100 papers on the ZX Calculus. Um, obviously, research papers. Um, 
And uh, there's an in-browser demo of PISIX, the Python tool for the ZX calculus. Uh, they have a brief tutorial. The Wikipedia page is also not bad. Um, for people who research, who are researching quantum computing, probably the best there's uh, um, a review that's an archive that's pretty good. Uh, this one. So, uh, well, it's written by my advisor, but uh, this is a review that discusses the ZX calculus um, aimed towards people who already are researching quantum computing. Um, but if you're newer to quantum computing, so this, I, as I mentioned before, the textbook for high schoolers. High school students is going to come out soon, and uh, they are recording lectures for that text with that textbook. Um, that's a joint effort between Continuum and IBM. Uh, um, also, so this is the Python tool for the ZX calculus. It's open source, so um, you can uh, install just like this pip install physics. Um, you can also, because being open source, you can also git clone and this thing if you want to edit the source code as well for physics. And uh, yeah, <laughs> um, so it's a Python tool for the ZX calculus. So as soon as you use Python, you can run it. Um, and uh, I've, they have a folder called demos. So I open the demos here. Um, so you can. Uh, Yeah, you can run it like that, and that creates a, this is just the getting started demo, but there's a whole bunch of them, like here, in that folder in from the GitHub repo. Um, and so this just created a random, it imported random from Python, so it just created a random circuit of, well, the, this one had it specified the seed, but you could randomize the seed. Uh, and uh, you could, well, you get this. And this draws in your Jupyter notebook your ZX calculus diagram. And um, internally, it's just graph. So um, you can use uh, tensor network techniques because ZX calculus is just a tensor network because it's like you're literally fusing spiders of the same color and I'm fusing. But you can also apply other rewrite rules. And um, in fact, uh, any two equal qubit circuits, multi-qubit circuits, or just any, it uh, doesn't matter if this does not be unitary, you can post select, etc. Any two, any uh, computation on any number of qubits, any, if you draw it as a ZX diagram and you have two of them that are mathematically equal, but the ZX diagrams or circuit diagrams are different, you can always prove that they're equal using only the rules of the ZX calculus. Um, so this is like uh, eight or so rules, it's quite, uh, simple rules. Uh, each of those you can describe uh, um, pretty intuitively. And so that's nice because you know that no matter how big your circuit is or know how many number of qubits, uh, you always, there exists some sequence of rewrite rules that's only using uh, those few eight or so rules and applied over and over again in some order. Um, of course, the existence of the rule doesn't mean that we know how to efficiently simplify one to the other, because otherwise we could efficiently simulate, uh, simplify any quantum circuit, which would bring the point of quantum computation. Um, that, so that problem is a sharply hard problem. Uh, but the, still, the fact that uh, you can efficiently do this with ZX calculus uh, or just with this rule set is fairly powerful. So um, I'm just uh, running the circuit here. but. Um, so there's this routine called zx.cliffordsim, and this efficiently simplifies any Cliffords because Cliffords is the fragment of quantum computation that you can efficiently simplify and efficiently simulate classically. So, um, so this is what you get after you simplify uh, that specific circuit that we started with. So notice how we started with this thing, which is so many, looks a lot more complicated, has a lot more things going on, lots of dots and connections but you can simplify it to this thing. Um, one thing to note is that this thing is not a circuit, so you have to extract a circuit from it. Um, I won't get into the details about that because that's a bit more technical on the research end, but um, you can also see that, uh, you can also see what is the steps of rewrite rules that was applied by the, the, the um, that was applied by the software. So you can have the software automatically find rewrite rules for circuit optimization, and uh, 
you can see for each step what exact rule was applied. So, um, yeah. And you can see that it got this thing in the end. And then this is the circuit extraction that I talked about. So it gives you this, and you can check that these are equal to the same circuit. Um, it connects to CASM, for example. So this is uh, open CASM, um, 2.0, not 3.0. But uh, so you can import other circuits from other libraries into and out of CX. And uh, you can <laughs> the rest of the tutorial just does this with a more complicated circuit. So so that's one example of uh, a research, I guess, research application of CX calculus, but also um, uh, it's quite easy and fun to play around with, I think. Um, but if people have questions about uh, other parts as well, of other applications of ZX Calculus, um, that the publications page is a good place to start. Um, so they're sorted by keywords. So if you can see uh, if your interest is variational circuits or uh, verification or um, condensed matter or um, measurement-based quantum computing, surface code. Uh, there's many different things that you could do for uh, with. And so I guess it's it's hard, kind of harder to say the word applications of ZX calculus because any qubit or qubit computation you can draw in the ZX calculus. So uh, <laughs> it's cool to try it to any, uh, any problem question you may have, any problem that you may have. And uh, it's, it's oftentimes a very intuitive, more, more intuitive uh, I, I found that it's much more intuitive to do to do this, and you can apply the rewrite holes in your head really quickly rather than um, these matrices that are too big to multiply yourself or some software you don't know what it's doing. Uh, so I will wrap up the uh, workshop part of this now. So I can send you all the links to these things. Um, also, I'll send the link to the zxcalculus.com to PISIX. Uh, this is a, you can also install this if you want to put ZX diagrams or a, into your uh, like PDF, so like for into your papers, for example, um, it's just a drag and drop GUI for making these graphs. So you don't have to use no any ticks to do to draw ZX diagrams in your papers. Um, this is the tutorial that is I uh, worked on with Jim at IBM, and uh, it's still um, so the tutorial is incomplete, but I'm in the editing stage. So uh, um, oh, I need to update this. This is a bit out of date, but um, if you click this link here in this GitHub repo, you can see and click download. Um, you can download the tutorial. And uh, also show that uh, in Disco, uh, this website lets you generate Qiskit quantum circuits from uh, sentences. So you can type in any sentence like, I like ice cream, and then it'll like generate a circuit for it in Qiskit. And you can choose other formats as well. So you can choose how it's parsed. Well, these are the grammatical connections. And you can choose way more complicated sentences as well. So uh, I'll choose this sentence because I'm lazy. Um, uh, so this is uh, Disco Pi running underneath. So this, uh, so this is uh, and quantum NLP, but it also does other things. So it also interfaces with physics if you prefer the, another version, another version of open source CX calculus implementation. Yeah, so that wraps it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I stopped screen sharing so it doesn't, so that it doesn't uh, um, infinite uh, screen share when I when I look at the chat. But uh, let me send the links first. Um, okay, so uh, um, I'll answer one question as I'm sending these links. So uh, there's a question in chat about what is the common feature of the problems where ZX calculus offers more advantages than the circuit model? So one thing to note is that uh, these are these are just, I guess these are both choices of how you uh, visualize and reason about your computation, but all comp all pretty much, most, almost, most if not all, circuit model diagrams you can draw as these calculus diagrams. 
uh, I would say like larger subroutines, they, well, um, well, I mean, most, sorry, most of the basic gates that are common in the circuit model, you can draw ZX calculus, but um, it's not going, it's still going to look pretty hefty if you're doing like quantum Fourier transform, um, something that the circuit itself isn't, can't, doesn't get much simpler than that. You're not going to gain much from going to ZX calculus. Stuff like QAOA, the, if you're using QAOA for like the Maxka algorithm, then the graph that you want to do Maxka algorithm on is exactly embedded in the ZX diagram when you convert the circuit to ZX calculus. So that's something that's really cool. Um, uh, this um, oh, this uh, package of, I'm oh, sorry, this, this tutorial, the last one I just sent, learning QC with ZX, uh, I'm gonna update that really cool quickly. I had some issues uploading a really big file size to GitHub, and I think I figured it out, so I can do that. Um, maybe I can do that right now, but. <laughs> Uh, I think so. Well, uh, I won't do it right now. To not, um, it's better that I answer questions. But um, if anyone had, wants, would like to give feedback, I'm always looking for feedback on this tutorial. And um, yeah, just reach out to me via Discord, and I'd really appreciate it. Um, it's going to be well. I'm right now it's already publicly available via this GitHub repo. But I, the plan is to make it to put it up on archives so that anyone can read it, and it can be more visible and easier to find. <laughs> Uh, and the audience for this one is uh, going um, is for uh, software developers who have a high school degree, or people with so people with a high school degree. So, um, if there's no further questions, uh, I think there is other workshops after this one, so I should wrap it up. But you can feel free to reach out to me via. Discord, I think, would be maybe the best place to reach out. Uh, if you have questions, um, there, oh, there's also the ZX Calculus Discord server. So uh, that one you can find the link to on zxcalculus.com, and it's open to anyone to join. And that's uh, the best place to ask technical questions about the ZX Calculus. Could we share all these links and the Discord server and the Discord server for the hackathon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me find the Discord server link. Give me a sec. Uh, okay. Yeah, after after workshop, if you if you want, can we share? Yeah, of course. That's what it's for. All these are public and public leaks. And let's see. That's the disc uh, the X calculus Discord server. Thank you so much yeah, for your time, for the in workshop. I also, I also share the worksheet. So the worksheet isn't publicly online, but, I, but uh, I'll share that as well in the Discord server. Yeah. I think you can start stop recording, Albert. <laughs> uh, OK. Um, um, thanks everyone for coming to the workshop and uh, have a really good hackathon. Um, Alberto and uh, me and the other organizers have worked really hard to put this hackathon on, um, and uh, it's, it's we're having uh, we're having fun to like <laughs> I guess watch the workshops and see. Uh, thank you, Leah. I thank you, everyone. <laughs> so we can continue uh, in the next workshop. You can find this in the email or in the Discord server. Thank you so much.